Hello guys, it's Luke again with Motor Minds, and today we are driving a 2014 Honda Accord Sport model. Now, back in 2013, Honda completely redesigned the Accord to bring it up to date and make it more competitive with the rest of the market. As we all know, the mid-size market is one of the most competitive car markets out there today, with more and more families wanting to seek something that's more fuel efficient but can still haul the whole family around. And I think the Accord has really brought it up a step from the old model. The old model was a bit outdated, a bit long the tooth, and I think it was kind of unappealing. It looked ugly, it didn't really have the versatility or the interior space of competitors, and it was time for a redesign. So let's start with the exterior of this car. I think the exterior of this car looks really sharp, especially comparing it to the rest of the mid-sedan market, which is kind of just vanilla, it doesn't, most of the market's kind of boring. I think this car, has a lot more going for it style-wise. I mean, the exterior on this car, especially it being the sport model, the front end is really, really sharp looking. They sculpted it to look a bit more aggressive than standard Accords, which I think is really cool. You can especially see it in the front bumper. And then when you go along the side of the car, there's a bunch of chrome, there's chrome on the door handles, and the um, undersides of the doors also have a flare to them, which makes it look really aggressive and the rocker panels are also more sculpted to make the car look lower and give it a sportier profile. And then you go to the back of the car and one big thing that the sport model has is dual exhaust. The standard Accord doesn't have dual exhaust, it has a single exhaust. And you also get a lip spoiler, keeping with that sporty look. One thing I don't really like about the styling of this car is this there are these two chrome strips that run along the rear quarter panels on either side of the car, and I think they look a bit out of place and kind of dorky. But other than that, I think this Accord looks really sharp, really aggressive, and it stands out in a competitive market. So, powering this Accord is a 2.4 liter IV Tech Earth Dreams engine. Now, Honda introduced the Earth Dreams engine a few years ago to combine power and efficiency in what it thinks is the best way. So that basically uses VTEC technology, which is something that pretty much anyone who's ever heard of Honda has heard of, which basically changes the valve timing to give you more power in the high end, but more fuel efficiency in the low end, which is exactly what you want. That's kind of combining the best of both worlds. And this engine makes 189 horsepower, and it's actually pretty quick. It's made into a six-speed CVT transmission, and all you car enthusiasts out there are going to be going, oh no, CVT, I hate CVTs, with good reason. They drone, they're unresponsive, and no one really likes them, but I think Honda made a really good effort with this one. It actually isn't that laggy. You get on the gas from a start, and you actually get going. There's a pretty good low-end pull, and there's also a sport mode where you can select your own gears via these paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. And the shifters actually have a really good feel to them. They're pretty responsive, as I'll show. I'll flick it into sport mode. I can put it in whatever gear I want. I can drive around in second gear at 4,000 RPM if I want to be a bitch. Or I can just stick it in fourth. And it'll actually go up to seven predefined ratios. And the shifts are quick, they're smooth, some downshifts can be a little jerky since it's not a manual, you can't really rev match, but it's actually pretty good overall. So let's move on to the driving experience of the Accord. I think compared to the rest of the market, it actually handles pretty well. It does have electrically boosted power steering, which is pretty standard nowadays, but the way the steering actually is weighted is not that bad. There's a little bit of on-center fuel, but it's generally pretty light. But once you actually start to dial in some lock, it starts to weight up pretty nicely. It actually feels pretty good when you're um, going around a turn. And when you're just in traffic, it's light and easy to maneuver, which is pretty good, combining the best of both worlds there. So you can see that the CVT sport mode works perfectly. I actually forgot I was in sport mode there. I was thinking, why is it not doing its droney CVT thing? But yeah, you can tell it actually has pretty good pickup. It pulls pretty well, especially in the low end. A lot of cars suffer from low end torque deprivation. I've spoken enough about that in other reviews. But you see, now I'm in auto mode. CVT's doing its thing. It's not very droney, which is actually pretty nice. A lot of CVTs can drone on and on forever. This one really doesn't. So let's move on to the interior of this car. I really like the interior. For a car that's around $23,000, $24,000 MSRP, 
it's actually pretty high quality. It feels really nice in here. You have carbon fiber-esque accents on the dashboard. It's all soft touch. The steering wheel has a faux leather wrap to it. And there's a lot of chrome accents. Door panels are soft touch. And it's just really nice in here. The seats, they are cloth seats, but they're really high quality cloth seats. They look like they were designed to kind of mock what a leather seat would look like. There's contrast stitching on them. And I think they're just really appealing and really comfortable. The seats are really nice. And the whole dashboard layout, it's actually pretty intuitive. Compared to the 2016 Accords, which don't even get me started with that dual screen layout. I think it's ridiculous, but this car, um, it's very easy to figure out where the controls are. It being essentially a base model car, there aren't a lot of controls to figure out, but if you have like OCD or ADD and you just can't figure it out, this is the car for you. So let's talk about the features on the inside of the Accord. You have an eight inch screen, which basically controls um, your audio, your phone, your radio, your, um, if you have navigation, the navigation would go through there. And it actually does um, air conditioning as well. You can do that through the screen. But the thing I don't like is it's not a touch screen and it's actually set pretty far back in the dash. I think it'd be a lot more practical to have a touch screen in this car instead of one that's controlled by dials. I mean, it works very well. It's very easy to figure out, but I feel like you would want to have a touch screen, but oh well. So yeah, this car, the stereo is pretty good. Um, doesn't have a lot of depth to the sound, but it gets the job done just fine. For what you're spending, you shouldn't really expect too, too much in the stereo department. So let's focus a bit more on interior comfort. I think this car is actually really comfortable. You have a lot of room in here. There's tons of headroom, tons of leg room. The seats are actually pretty plush. They're very supportive. A lot of lumbar support, even though it doesn't have adjustable lumbar. Actually, you know what? It does have adjustable lumbar, my bad. But yeah, seats are super comfortable. Back seat room is gargantuan. Don't even get me started. It's one of the biggest back seats in the class. And I just really like the whole way that this interior is laid out overall. One thing that's plagued Hondas in the past has been road and wind noise. They just haven't been very refined in that department. And it's kind of a shame because when you're building such a good car, you would want to kind of up the ante on noise levels. And Honda, for this generation of Accord, they did just that. They actually introduced active noise cancellation, which emits a kind of white noise which cancels out road noise coming in from the outside. And it worked really well when combating wind noise. There's almost no wind noise in this car. But one thing that there is a fair amount of is tire roar. You can hear a little bit of tire roar when you're going at high speeds. But I mean, that's not the end of the world. Overall, it's a pretty hushed ride. And that brings me on to the ride, actually. The ride in this car is pretty good. It's not super plush, but it's well controlled. It doesn't feel jittery or uncomfortable. And I mean, on the highway, it's very smooth. Around town, when you're doing some sporty driving in back roads, it actually tightens up pretty well and gives you good control over the vehicle. The other thing I love about the interior of this car is the gauges. I really like how Honda put in a big speedometer that sits right in the middle of everything. You have the tack to the left, and then you have fuel gauge, um, engine temperature gauge to the right, which is actually really nice. It gives you, it makes it feel a bit sportier by having that big speedo in there. So let's talk a little bit about the personality of the Accord, since that's the one thing that MotorMinds always looks for in a car. And I feel like the Accord, it's one of those cars that kind of stands out from the crowd a little bit, at least more so than like the Toyota Camry or Hyundai Sonata or Nissan Altima. Those guys are kind of boring, don't really have a lot going for them. I mean, if you watch my Sonata review, you'll see that the Sonata gets its personality from this air of luxury. I think the Accord gets its personality from this air of sportiness, efficiency, and simplicity. I mean, this car, at least in its base model form, it has a good look to it. It has a nice interior. Even for a base model car, it has a very nice interior. And it's actually pretty fun to drive. You have a peppy engine. You can shift the gears manually, which is really cool. Makes you feel like you're driving a sports car to a certain extent. And I feel like the fact that it combines all that with a package that's really, really family oriented, something that you can use on long trips. It's very practical. I feel like that combination makes this car something that's going to appeal to a lot of the market and it kind of gives it a little bit of a flair to it. it kind of makes it feel cool just to drive around. So basically what the Accord does is gives you a really nice package, practicality, sportiness, comfort for a very, very low price. I mean, this car starts at around 23, 24,000 bucks for the sport package 
and you get a car that feels very upscale, very well put together. And I really like that. It makes you get that feeling that you're driving a really good car without breaking the bank on it. Give her the beans. Yeah, she'll push you back in your seat, no problem. Absolutely no problems. Not sure if you can tell by the video, but there is a little bit of jitteriness to the ride when you're going over rough surfaces. You can kind of feel the car shake a little, which kind of shows that this ride isn't quite as refined as some of the competitors. Part of that might be down to the 18 inch sport alloy wheels though. And you know, that's a compromise that might be worth it if you're looking for some of those style points, you know? So overall with the Accord, I think this is the perfect car if you're looking for something that feels upscale, high quality, has sporty looks, has a very efficient yet fun powertrain, and is super practical all for a very cheap price. If that is what you're looking for in a car, take a look at the Accord. Thanks again for tuning in to Motor Minds, and we hope to see you next video.